Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Wednesday, October 25th, 2017, and I want to talk some more about the iron battery. So as promised, today we're going to go through the fundamentals of how the iron battery works and what we've done so far to make sure it works as well as it can and what we can do in the future to make it work even better. So how does an all-iron battery work? It works like any battery. You need an anode side and a cathode side. At the anode side, metal is going to dissolve into an oxidized form metal, metal 2 plus. At the cathode side, you got metal 3 plus. That's going to be reduced to metal 2. Electrons are flowing. You need to balance your charge so you have some salt bridge in which ions can move through there, but I electrons can't. That keeps you from accumulating negative or positive charge on either side. But you can make a gel spacer instead of a salt bridge, and that improves the ion conductivity and reduces the internal resistance. In our case, we're going to use ion metal at the anode and an iron salt at the cathode. We've tried iron EDTA, iron cyanide, iron chloride. We can try some other things. The best design so far has been the tube cell in which we use a little conical tube. We put iron EDTA in a graphite paste at the bottom and then we poured a gel on top of that, filled the top with steel wool and connected everything up with a little insulated copper wire and a bit of iron wire at the top. Now I'm able to make five of those and connect them up in series such that about the 0.6 volt comes off of each one of those stacked up to form a total of about three volts. That was enough to light up an LED. You can see that whole assembly here. So this was from about six months ago. That little green LED is all lit up it's all driven by iron. It was fairly rechargeable. It did have a little bit of an outgassing issue that we were working on. That's why it's coated with a little wax at the top to help cut down outgassing and evaporation. So that was the version as of six months ago. This is the version we have now. It's much smaller, much more compact, and should be able to use less material and stack up more cells more easily. Stacking those five tube cells was extremely difficult. So I'm hopeful that this means that we can make a simpler procedure for developing the cell and for replicating the cell. And because I'm pretty excited about this, I have started a crowdfunding campaign. If you're new to this, I hope you'll check that out. The link is in the description. We're running for another 15 days. We're trying to raise $5,000 for an undergraduate to work on this project to build a bunch of these cells and test their performance and get the best possible design we can and then build a really nice open source battery plans document, publish that, and give that to the community so people can build their own all-iron battery if they're interested. So if you'd like to support that, do check out the link. If you'd like to share that with your friends who are interested in batteries or open source technology or storing renewable energy, I hope you'll share that. If you like this video, that gives us a little boost in visibility, so I really appreciate your help on all this. I love the comments I've been getting, and I hope you'll leave me more. For now, we update Monday through Friday. We're talking iron batteries, we're building them, we're testing them, and we're sharing the results with you right here in the Allen Lab.